Hey guys, it's, uh, it's Justin Block for JLB Sports TV, and today I'm making this video coming off of the pretty heartbreaking loss last night. So in my mind, the game kind of went like a movie. The Packers were down 21 nothing. The little guy now, used to be the big guy, but now taken down, coming back up, you know, fighting from 21 points back to tie the game unbelievably tie the game. With a little bit of luck, the onside kick, some outstanding play from Aaron Rodgers, you know. Feeling good about this. Then Neil Rackers missed a 34-yard field goal as time expired, so of course it felt like it was meant to be. But then again, in the 2007 NFC Championship game, I thought it was meant to be also when we won the coin toss. Once again, Charles Woodson called tails. Tails never fails. And we were receiving the ball. And everybody in the stadium was thinking, all right, whoever's gonna have the ball first is obviously gonna win the game. Not so much. Not so much. In overtime on the first playoff play action, I thought that was a great call. Jennings ran right past the safeties, was wide open in the middle of the field. Aaron Rodgers just had to lay the ball in there. Jennings would have had a nice 80 yard touchdown, win the game, go to the playoffs, dramatic comeback, completed. Hollywood script written. No. No. Instead, the Packers season ended just how it started. I believe there was a third down play that Aaron Rodgers got sacked, fumbled, and the Cardinals won the game. Uh, right before the snap, I was just, I was thinking to myself, and I said this to my dad, I was like, he's gonna get sacked. This is gonna be our season right here. Because it, it's just perfect. Throughout the season, the entire, the one consistent problem was sack, 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 sacks. Aaron Rodgers sack, fumbled. Dansby takes in the end zone, game. But more importantly, the Packers did not follow my five keys to success, which I gave last video. The first one being, protect Aaron Rodgers. I believe Rodgers was sacked five times. The blitz pickup was mixed, was missed on his fumble and it led to the Packers losing the game. Even though he did an outstanding job and probably played the best game he's ever played, they didn't protect Aaron Rodgers, he was sacked five times, and that surely played a significant role in losing the game. Second one was to run the ball. Now, the Packers were doing a decent job of running the ball, but they fell so far behind so early that they couldn't really afford to run the ball. They couldn't afford to lose clock. When Ryan Grant did get his opportunities, he ran the ball very, very well, I have to say. In the end, the Packers finished with 90 total rushing yards. Uh, Grant even had a 20-yard run, so I like the effort from Ryan Grant. The third key was locking up in coverage. This has been a problem since Al Harris tore his ACL and everybody moved up in the pecking order. Tremont Williams is now the starter, Jared Bush is the nickel back, and Jared Bush really sucks at defense, so that obviously caused problems. Obviously, after the Pittsburgh game, I was really concerned about the Arizona uh, Week 17 game, because I thought they were gonna light us up on the scoreboard just the way that Pittsburgh did, but Arizona didn't play their starters, didn't show their hand, they did that this game, and they basically followed Pittsburgh's game plan. Spread the field, have trips on either side, bunch formations, the Packers are mostly playing a zone coverage, and they, the defenders simply didn't know who to pick up, and there were wide open receivers left and right, mostly over in the middle of the field, too. The fourth key was being able to blitz, effectively blitz Kurt Warner, get pressure on him, make him get the ball out quicker, just kick his ass on the ground, make sure that he has no time to throw the ball, because obviously when he had plenty of time yesterday, and he found open receivers, wide open receivers everywhere. So all in all, there was very little pressure generated, not very effective blitzes. What blitzes did come, the Cardinals did a great job of picking up. Clay Matthews had a good game, didn't get any sacks, but generated consistent pressure on Warner, so kudos to him. And the fifth key, I believe, was penalties. The Packers had eight penalties for 76 yards, I know some of them are questionable. Some that come to mind or the roughing the passer call on Colin Jenkins, which is disputable. It didn't really look like it to me. And also, on two of Larry Fitzgerald's touchdowns, when Charles Woodson was covering him, Larry Fitzgerald simply pushed Charles Woodson to the, to the ground, ran in the end zone, and caught the ball. Two touchdowns. Now, the first one, people say he fell down, whatever, but on the second one is where it really gets me, because Woodson was clearly pushed to the ground, Fitzgerald got open, scored a touchdown, and a single score was the difference in the game, so that's a score right there. But I'm trying to tone down the penalties because none of the Packers in the locker room complained about penalties, so there's no reason us Packer fans should be complaining about it. There were other uh, issues throughout the game that were the deciding factors. Even though there was a clear face mask on Aaron Rodgers when he got stripped and the Cardinals won the game. Just saying, but you know, it's not a big deal. The Packers had their opportunity to win the game and they didn't take advantage. Also, one thing that surprised me the most was that the Packers actually lost the turnover battle. They committed three turnovers. The Rodgers fumble at the end of the game. There was the driver fumble in the beginning of the game and the, the Rodgers interception on the first play of the game. The Packers got one back with Charles Woodson's great strip on Larry Fitzgerald, which really energized the Packers and got them back into the game, but ultimately, 
the turnover battle was the deciding factor for the Cardinals. Even though people think that Charles Woodson got killed, I really don't think so. I think he did a fine job on Larry Fitzgerald. It's Larry Fitzgerald after all. His, Larry Fitzgerald's first touchdown to the speed oval, but on the second one, he clearly threw Woodson to the ground. Clearly was a penalty. And aside from those calls, you know, he really wasn't active most of the night. But one thing that really got me on defense was the poor, poor tackling. There's poor tackling throughout, missed tackles everywhere on both sides of the ball too for the Cardinals and the Packers. But to me, the defense just seemed confused and ill-prepared, which I'm so surprised on because Adam Capers' defense you think is prepared. He's an outstanding defensive coordinator, but if you saw shots of the press box, he was throwing temper tantrums throughout the game. I just felt that the Packers weren't prepared to deal with the Arizona alignments and the plays they called. This was a problem that that was seen against Pittsburgh. I thought they would correct it for the yesterday's game. They obviously didn't. So the blame doesn't necessarily fall upon Dom Capers for not preparing them. He'll obviously take some of the blame, but obviously the players sometimes have to step up, make smart reads, and put a little bit more extra time in the film room to identify those plays. And once again, I cannot say enough about the amazing job done by the offense. Rodgers really showed how he's he's a stud. He's a superstar, simply put. Jermichael Finley said a Packers uh, Receiving record, he was a stud throughout the entire game. All the wideouts played amazing. Uh, Greg Jennings, great, great game, great game. His touchdown catch in the end zone was one of the, probably one of the best catches that we've seen in the NFL all, all year. Made another great catch on the sideline when Rodgers clearly was throwing the ball away, but he made the catch. Also, Mike McCarthy coached an amazing game, called a great game, kept the Packers in it, called great plays. Just showed outstanding resilience, and as ha as he said after the game, the probably the biggest part of the Packers is their ability to be resilient and to overcome obstacles, and that was true in this game, and that's a sign of a very well coached football team. So I applaud the Packers on the 2009 season. It was a great season. Probably they probably outperformed many people's expectations, and I look forward to 2010.